be a network engineer, they said. It'll be fun, they said. You definitely won't be drinking coffee at 9.30 at night because you have to work at midnight until 6 a.m. after working 40 hours a week already, they said. They lied. Welcome back. Today we're reacting to some more Curse Gazag. We're going to react to a thousand kilometer cable to the stars, the Skyhook. Now I've heard of a Skyhook before. I get the general concept, but I have no idea on the details or how this is feasible or the physics behind it. So I'm really excited to learn more about it. Let's just hop right in. Getting to space is hard. Right now, it is. It's, it's like very hard. A mountain on a unicycle with a backpack full of explosives. <laughs> it's slow. You can't transport a lot of stuff, and you might die. Yeah, that's a true. It needs to reach a velocity of about forty thousand kilometers an hour to escape from Earth. To get to that speed, rockets are mostly containers for fuel with a mm -hmm. tiny tip of payload. There's actually an amateur rocket club where they build rockets, like the model rockets think, but they build their own. It's not just go buy the kit, you know, from the store and put it together and launch it off. They actually build their own rockets. And there's actually at least one that was able to make it into space. That's crazy. Now people do it all the time, like with weather balloons and stuff, but no, this was a rocket and it's quite the accomplishment. So those guys are smart. Not sure why I shared that, but I find it really interesting. This is bad if you want to go to other planets because you need a lot of heavy stuff if you want to survive and maybe even come back. Yeah, humans are expensive to keep alive less fuel and in space. Payload. And to get off of a planet once you've arrived, like say if we were to go on a mission to Mars, you need to get off the planet. We solved most of our transport problems on Earth is what you call infrastructure. Whether it's roads for cars, ports for ships, or rails for trains, we've made it easier to get to places. Yep. We can apply the same solution to space travel. Space infrastructure will make getting into orbit and out to the moon, Mars, and beyond easier. And it's like I always say, if it's economical, people will do it. If it's not economical, People aren't going to do it. They're not going to invest in it to waste money. Science fiction, there is a simple yet promising technology that does not require new science. The more and more we do it, the more economic it becomes. This has been tested successfully in orbit already. A cable and a weight, known as a tether. We've tested this in orbit? It's so simple, it's surprising. What if we put tethers hundreds or thousands of kilometers long into space and had spacecraft use them as ladders to climb to higher altitudes and gain speed? This concept is known as the Skyhook. I didn't realize that we've tested something like this already before. So we've actually kind of played with this concept already and it's worked. So it's not just a theoretical type of thing. It's something we've actually done, albeit probably at a smaller scale than what we're talking about here. Cool. It works even better if we make it spin. A counterweight holds a long cable in place while it rotates around a circle. A rotating tether slows down its tip relative to the ground at the bottom and speeds it up at the top like a catapult. This means that you can transfer energy from the tether and get a massive boost when released, more or less for free, equal to twice the tether's rotation velocity. The specialized flight okay, yeah. already exists that can survive the extraordinary stresses a skyhook would be faced with. To protect against cuts... What kind of material would you use? Meteorites, we can thread our tether into a web of redundant fibers. Would you use like carbon Since nano? The skyhook would pass over the same spot many times a day. This would allow small reusable shuttles to catch up with it. Of course, it's not that easy. At its lowest point, the tether's tip is dashing through the atmosphere at around 12,000 kilometers per hour. <laughs> because of Earth's atmosphere, yeah. we can't lower the sky hook too much or it will get too hot from air friction. Yep. So it will dip to a height of and 80 it'll slow down too. kilometers and no lower. To match this, we'll need specialized spacecraft that can get to the tether. Mm -hmm. While this isn't exactly easy, it's still much cheaper than getting a big tin can filled with rocket fuel to go 40,000 kilometers an hour. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's still significantly easier and cheaper. There's a short time window of 60 to 90 seconds to find a tiny thing in the sky moving at Mark 12. That part seems pretty difficult. The tip could have a sort of fishing line, a kilometer long, with a navigation drone that helps the spacecraft connect. Technology is a wonderful thing. Our skyhook in orbit. 
As more and more ships latch onto it and pull themselves up, they use up the momentum that keeps it in place. If we don't do anything, it will slow down and crash into the atmosphere. Yeah, that makes sense, because you don't get that energy for free. It's got to come from somewhere. The Skyhook is a battery of orbital energy. It's possible to balance the payloads coming in and being sent off. Oh, okay. Humans and materials home to Earth add energy to the tether, which it can give to other ships departing yep. into space. So if you keep this it balanced, the doesn't lose any energy. That's the pretty clever. Use it, the cheaper it gets. If we're still losing energy with each boost, we can recover it with small electric or chemical engines that regularly correct the tether's position. A set of tethers, one around Earth and one around Mars, could make trips between the planets fast, straightforward, and low cost compared to rockets. The Earth tether would sit in low Earth orbit to grab people and payloads and fling them off to Mars. The Mars tether catches <laughs> that would be quite the ride, though, hey? Landing on the surface. In the opposite direction, the tether could pick up a vehicle traveling through Mars's thin atmosphere at only about 1,000 kilometers an hour, not much faster than our airliners on Earth, and huh. fling it back to Earth to be caught and lowered down. That's pretty cool. The tethers could shorten trips between both planets from nine months down to five or even three, and reduce the scale of the rockets required by between 84 and 96 percent. Wow. Even better, people may be able to travel in relative luxury as we could afford to invest in passenger comfort. Mm -hmm. Tether travel would be first class seats to Mars. That's crazy. Together, tethers around that you can Mars reduce the, the rocket by that much. Backbone that would make space travel affordable. But let's go further. Starting from low Mars orbit, a tether could boost ships to the asteroid belt. The first craft sent to a new asteroid would need rockets to slow down at its destination. Mm -hmm. Subsequent arrivals might find a tether waiting to catch them and send them back for free. Getting to asteroids cheaply is a major factor in opening up the resources of the solar system. So like that space mining that we just watched delivered to Mars just weeks to make that much more economical. They would be the perfect building blocks for our I think they actually mentioned skyhooks in that video. Mars moons are very convenient. Moons are not to scale. The solar system orbit that close to their planet. Size is exaggerated by a factor of 40. Wow. We don't need to worry about slowing it down, making it the perfect attachment point for super tethers just under ah. 6,000 kilometers long. That's the a lot. Would fly just over the surface of Mars and be very easy to catch. The upper tip can fling ships all the way to Jupiter and Saturn. Wow. The same super tether can also bring the inner solar system closer. Venus and Mercury are a single swing away. Unlike Mars, they're bursting with solar energy and are rich in minerals. Yep. In the long term, nothing is... These tethers would be incredibly expensive to make, though, right? ...for the terrestrial planets centered on the Martian moons. Tethers are a comparison. But think of the savings sustainable solution that you're making from the rockets. Rockets are expensive, too. ...accessible for exploitation and exploration. Considering that we have the technology to build them today, there's really no good excuse to wait any longer. Parts of the solar system... And you're talking about reducing... A rocket requirement by 80 to 96 percent, they said, like for Mars? That's hard to reach, but You're not going to just send one rocket. This is over many, many rockets, right? So that savings adds up. Rockets are expensive. Learned quite a bit today. Um, this was an awesome video, as always. I mean, I don't even know why I say that at the end of each one. Kurzgesagt just... They don't make bad content. It's just always good. So if I ever forget to say that at the end of the one, it's probably true still. <laughs> yeah, the Skyhook is a very interesting concept. I don't know what the drawbacks would be to one other than they're expensive to put into place. And because it's a new thing, people don't really want to make that investment because they're scared it might not work out, etc. Is that pretty much why we're not doing it now? It takes us a while to get into the swing of new things and the hefty cost investment that goes along with it. I mean, it seems like it's a simple numbers game. If you can literally save, like they said from Mars, 80 to 96% per rocket requirement. So you, I don't know what that is in cost of building the rocket, but it's got to be substantial over many, many, many rockets. Because if you can, once again, if you can make it economical, people will do it more. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like this content, hit that like button. If you want to see more, slap that subscribe button. And I hope that you have such a wonderful day.